Hi everybody and thanks for taking a look at Polybrush. So this is just a overview of the uh, sculpting tools within Polybrush beta version 0.9. So again, this is just for the beta version 0.9. Uh, make sure and check you're looking at the latest video in case you're just watching this online. So to open up Polybrush, go to Tools, Polybrush, and then Polybrush Window. That will open up the main Polybrush panel here, which again, just in the beta looking pretty ugly, but it's going to get the work done. Uh, then create some sort of geometry. Uh, it can be imported geometry, it can be like this is just a standard Unity plane, it can be a Pro Builder mesh, anything at all will work just fine. At the top of the Polybrush panel here, you'll see a series of mode buttons, and these are the, uh, the main modes that Polybrush can work in. So the first one is raise and lower terrain. Uh, sorry, not terrain. Um, meshes, whatever you're painting on, it'll raise and lower the geometry. Uh, the second one is for smoothing geometry. The third one is for painting uh, vertex colors. The fourth one is for uh, blending textures. And the final one is for just a few settings that we have built in for the moment. Obviously, that'll grow. So again, this tutorial is more about, or actually all about, the uh, sculpting tools. So we'll just look at the first and second modes here, the number one being raise and lower, the second being for smoothing. So. Moving back to the raise and lower, once you have that, uh, your selected mesh will then display the, um, the sculpting tool here. So if you hold control, you can change the radius and, uh, sorry, hold control and use your, your scroll wheel. You can also just drag the slider here, but it's real nice and quick just to hold control and do that. If you hold shift, it will change the fall off on the inside. So if you want it to be a very harsh fall off or even none at all, you can bring that inner blue circle all the way out or all the way down to nothing. So it's a very soft brush if you'd rather. Uh, you also see we have a fall off curve that you can affect. So if you really want to get in here and make an exact curve of some point, you can do that. Even something that might make multiple uh, bumps in your smoothing, etc. You can do that and have something uh, pretty unique when you are uh, when you're sculpting. Looks like I just found a bug there, but hey, this is a beta version, so we'll just keep rolling and we'll set that back to one of the basic standard curves. All right, so below that is the strength, and this you can control by holding Control and Shift, and you won't see any visual indicator uh, yet in the scene, but you can watch the strength uh, bar go up and down, and this is just exactly how much it's going to affect based on um, the brush effect that you have down here for raise and lower, uh, or how much it's going to smooth, or how much it's applying vertex or texture colors. So again, that's hold control and shift, and you can see the strength bar going up and down. So at a very low strength, 0.01 or so, it's going to just barely move that terrain up. You can probably barely see it moving from the side a bit better. Or if I move that all the way up to one, it's going to move a lot quicker and do a, uh, have a lot um, larger and stronger effect. Pretty basic stuff if you're used to um, Photoshop or ZBrush or Mudbox, anything at all really, a lot of simple things like this. So below that, then you have a few extra settings. Ignore open edges is a really handy one. When you have that turned on, uh, sorry, on like this, while I'm painting, the edges will stay right where they are. So this is really useful when you need to um, sort of anchor parts of the mesh. If you have something that is sticking into or through a structure and you want it to just stay right there, a lot of times you'll have that. Uh, make sure and check on ignore open edges. And then while you're painting, those open edges will stay right there, which is really, really handy. Uh, it's especially handy actually for smoothing um, because as we'll see when we start looking at smoothing, otherwise you can get some, uh, some really funky effects. So we'll, we'll do that with that later when we get back to smoothing. If we turn off, just to show, if we turn off ignore open edges, of course now those edges will move just like the rest. Below that is the direction, and this you'll normally keep on up, probably, um, right and forward, very rarely. It's just the direction that it's going to push the vertices in. Uh, normal will be the second or maybe first most useful option, and that's going to move it in the individual uh, vertices normal direction. So when I do that, that's how I can get things like uh, overhangs and sort of, you'll see how it starts to push into itself here. You can get some more interesting effects with this. Obviously you have to be a little more careful with it and use it right, but it can really be handy um, 
for having something a little more interesting that you're creating than just moving um, the vertices up and down like a regular terrain would. This way you can get much more interesting detail. And I probably need a, um, a better mesh with more subdivisions to really show that. But uh, moving on here. So finally there is the brush effect, and this is just the multiplier against the strength. So if I turn this up to something crazy like 10 and start painting, it's going to go really quick. Uh, if I have this set at something very low like 0.25, even at the full strength of 1, it's barely going to work. So this is useful for, um, you have to think of strength as sort of an opacity, it's just a general 0 to 100 percent, whereas the brush effect is what that full effect is. So if you're working on a very large mesh and you want to move it 5, 10, or even 100 meters at a time, you want to set that brush effect very high up. Or if you're working on a very small uh, mesh, then you want to set the brush effect very small. And again, the strength is just 0 to 100 percent. Um, that probably makes more sense than I'm thinking it does, so I'll, I'll leave it at that and you guys can let me know if, if it doesn't. Um, one last thing, should have thought of this at first, but of course you can hold shift and it will do the opposite of whatever you're currently doing. So again, if I set this back up to 5, just to be more obvious. So the regular left click um, paints up, holding shift is going to do the opposite so it paints downward. Real simple, nothing to it. Um, we skipped over two items on the top here, um, or three, because they aren't quite as important uh, or, or not for the basics there. We'll take a look at, at them here. So this little drop down right now has the brushes. And you can add new brushes if you want, as many as you want. And basically, uh, they will save your settings. Maybe if I set this, or actually the, the brush settings up here, sorry. So I have a very specific radius. Uh, maybe I want this to be a small but very uh, precise brush with exactly this fall off. I could save that as a brush and add another brush to change settings etc and then I can quickly move between these different brushes if you have specific settings that you really need to use and keep. Uh, below that is the mirroring um, and this allows you set this back to default. This allows you to mirror your brush from one side to the other um, left to right, top bottom, uh, or even in camera mode. So if I click on none and change this to X, you can see now I have the mirroring going on the X axis. So you can use this to create symmetry. Uh, obviously Y would be up and down. Can't see that on a, on a 2D plane like this right now. And Z is uh, forward and back, or however you like to think of that. Uh, you can also mirror in camera direction which gets a little more interesting. So that's going to be based on the camera. So even no matter how I uh, turn the, the scene camera here, it's always symmetrying left and right, which is uh, really, really useful. Same would go for Y. Now it's mirroring on the Y and Z, of course, in this case, isn't going to uh, show up on a, a flat 2D mesh here. <clears throat> So that's the mirroring. Turn it all the way back to none when you just want it to work normally. Uh, that camera mode is especially awesome. I really recommend people take a look at that. Uh, a final item here uh, is the brush settings. So this is where you have a few extra bits, mainly the radius minimum, the radius maximum. Uh, this we've already had one question on. Uh, I should have mentioned it earlier. Um, if you're finding that your brush just isn't getting large enough to work with, um, so like right now if I hold control and zoom this all the way up, it's not getting any larger than this. I can change this number and now I have a much larger uh, maximum or set it uh, smaller if I want to make sure that the brush can't get any larger than that. So moving over to the smoothing settings, actually let me uh, set this back up to around 5 where I think it works best. Okay so the second mode is the smoothing mode and let's paint up some funky geometry here that maybe we make it get a little crazy and so it makes sense to smooth it out. Alright, so here's some pretty chunky uh, geometry and you want to make that smoothed out. Just go to the smoothing mode, and as you're probably already guessing, um, same things apply here. 
your brush settings stay right across. The only thing that changes is the smooth settings below. So again, you have ignore open edges, you have the direction, and you have whether relax is turned on and off. So you can use that and simply paint onto it. If you want to do uh, a less, uh, lesser effect, just hold control and shift to turn the strength down. You can, of course, use control to shrink the overall size of the brush. Hold control shift, oops, I mean shift to move the fall off. All the same things work. Um, those are all just affecting the actual brush, which smoothing and, or any of these actually, any of these modes are all still using the brush. And that's why up here you have the brush presets in case you want to quickly swap between brush presets while you're moving between different modes. Uh, so, like I was saying before, you can turn off open edges and then you're gonna get stuff like that happening, uh, which sometimes you might actually want. Normally you probably don't, or at least in my uses, I definitely haven't wanted that. So you usually want to keep the ignore open edges checkbox on to keep your mesh a little more sane. <clears throat> uh, once again, you have the smoothing direction. So this is pretty useful. You can change this just to up, and now it's only going to smooth on the up axis. So you can get, you can level out things, which is, uh, a neat trick that I hadn't thought of until Carl actually mentioned it while I was trying to get him to implement sort of a leveling feature, which will come in um, later on anyway because it works a bit differently. But this already is a really nice way to set up um, just one direction smoothing. Or again, you could use right, left, uh, sorry, right, forward, uh, or full normal smoothing. Oops, let's make sure that ignore open edges is on. And there we go, not really too much to show there. Uh, and that's really it for the uh, mesh sculpting as of the beta 0.9. Again, just making sure everyone knows while you're watching this, make sure you're checking for any newer videos. This is just for beta 0.9, uh, pretty early release. So go ahead and check for others before you assume this is uh, all there is to it or wonder why your GUI looks much different. Um, okay, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you in a couple extra tutorials where I'll also go over the vertex painting, texture painting, and the extra settings over here.